Whoa, looks like I got here just in time. A little yeah. sooner, you might even, it looks like you might needed help. I know, I know you're not into that. So, <laughs> so, so what's going on? I thought you were going to work on the trunk or the fender or something. Yeah, I did change. Since we got quotes on all the panels, yeah. I figured start on the door, middle of the car. That way I can build forward on the fender, quarter okay. panel. Everything blends out from there around right? trying to start yeah. front to rear. We still got, we started out with that 4x10 sheet of 18 gauge mm -hmm. with the floor. We still got that, so we're going to use that to do both of the panels here. So we have like no, almost no investment in this already. I mean, we're really going to be making money. Yeah. As long as you don't need any more tools. Yeah. And I think. You think you're going to? No, we're going to, we'll use the English wheel again okay. to bring in the shape to this. We'll use the, we'll show the uh, tipping dies again, forming both the reveal and this. Oh, so you're not just cutting this? No. No, see, look at. So it's not just these repairs here? No, it's what you see there. Yeah. And then obviously oh. into the, the structure of it here. Um, this up here. Dents. But what I am going to do, this is good up here. This is the GM yeah. stamping, so that's good. And obviously for your handle here and the lock set. So we're going to cut that out and then replace all the sheet metal. Okay. Back. Still a lot, but you're, you're going to keep this reveal. You're going to keep the, yeah. the stamping around the lock. Yeah, there's no use. There's and it no looks, use. that looks like good metal. There's no dents. Yeah. Yeah, there's no use no taking, rust. getting rid of that. So all this comes out. So how, so, well, so what are we going to do? Flip it over. Let me show you. There's some more to this stuff. All right. Oh, great. There's more? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, maybe I should have waited a little longer. Oh. So, all the bottom here, the actual door frame and the structure itself is rotted. Yeah. This corner is pretty bad there. So, we'll go ahead, we'll rebuild that, and then uh, cut the skin off. The nice thing with the skin off of this yeah. um, is for the regulator and all the internals, we can flip it over. Now, we're working on everything there. So, so you'll be able to clean up the regulator get every, and yeah. everything so it works good again. Get everything fixed, repaired in there. And hopefully we don't find any more damage. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, that quote was based on what he saw. Yeah. So you get in there pretty soon, there are yeah. hundreds more than that. Yep. And, and the nice thing is uh, we got all the uh, gaskets, rubber, the whiskers, everything from for the uh, vent window. Yeah, for Clark's, uh, from Clark's Corvair parts. Okay. So that'll all go, we'll restore that, go back together with it. You um, got all this then from Clark's? Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so let me get started on it. All right, well, good luck. <laughs> Let me know if you need any help. So the floors are done. Mark did a great job. Now it's time to move on to the doors. If you've been following along, you know with the Corvair, our concept is that we go out and get a quote from the body shop for the job we're going to do. Then we do it in-house, buy all the tools, and we keep track of it, and we try to beat the body shop quote. When we did the floor pans, we ran into a lot of unforeseen rust. Big surprise on an old car like this. And the body shop quote was a little under $2,300. We came in at around three grand. So right now, we're about $740 behind. But we have all kinds of tools. I mean, we probably have every tool we need to do all From the work here forward. Yeah, we got all the tools we need to finish this restoration. All right, so now we got the doors. The shop quote came in at 800 bucks a door, so we got $1,600 into them. And I think what we're gonna find is that's gonna go up. We're gonna get phone calls a week into it and say, hey, we got rust repair, we didn't see from the outside. Basically, what I think is gonna be a lot in the door structure itself, not just the skin. We got all the tools that we need, we got the sheet metal. I think what we do is we just jump into it See where we are. We're going right. to recoup the money pretty quick. Yeah, by hopefully the first door, but definitely yeah. by the second one, right? <laughs> definitely by the second. If you don't get carried away adding tools again. Yeah. I started laying out where I plan to separate the old door skin from the frame, leaving behind the door handle assembly location because this is intact and damage free, so I'll reuse it. I like laying a tape line down to trace with the marker for a laser straight line. All right, here's a little tip for you. When you're joining two pieces here at these 90 degrees that we have, go ahead and radius them. What it'll do is it'll keep you from putting a lot of heat into a 90 degree corner, give you a lot more strength into your weld. I'm beginning the process of removing the old door skin. 
slowly separating it from the frame using a flap disc and panel separating tool. All right, let me show you what we're doing over here. So what I'm doing here with the flap wheel and the grinder is grind it along this folded edge of the door skin. And you want to go slow, take your time. Make some passes until you see this faint black line, which is actually the separation between the panels. That's what you want. You'll see where you can get your knife in there and see the separating. You don't want to go any further because then you start changing the actual, the actual dimensional shape of it. Before I go any further, I'm taking the opportunity to make a steel template. I'm using a permanent marker and a scribe to accurately transfer the curvature of the door to my template. This is a technique you'll see me use throughout this project. Using the electric throatless shears, I cut out the shape, leaving a bit of excess to make a second pass with the hand shears for a far more accurate cut. So you're making a template out of steel? Why not yeah. cardboard? We got that laying around everywhere. <laughs> because I do it out of cardboard, it would have worked. It would have been a lot cheaper. I would have set it down, you would have stepped on it or sat on it, and now I have no profile. So to steal, it's just an easy way to get an accurate profile or template that's repeatable. I can sit down around for weeks on the end. What it did was I got the center reveal of the door, and then down at the lower edge there. That gave me those two points, and then wrapping up to where we're meeting the new skin. So now I'll use that when I go ahead to make the new one. And you got to make the template while the door's still assembled, so that way you have the exact shape, because if you cut the skin off... I lose the profile. And you'll never know what the yep. shape actually was. Yep. That's a good tip. So I know you use uh, witness marks, you know, so you can line your template and everything back up or the patch panel you're making, but what's up with the uh, center punch making holes? Well, I use them, again, because it's a template where it's going to be set aside here for a couple days, a couple weeks. If something happens to the Sharpie line, simple as that. If it gets wiped away, I hit it with some chemical or something, they're gone. There's some of this stuff that we're doing there. Once you cut a piece of metal, you can't go backwards. So it's just added insurance. I drilled holes at the corner to assure when I was cutting out the skin I would achieve my radius. With the template made, I'll continue freeing the skin from the frame, working it with the angle grinder and flap disc along with the panel separating tool. Lastly, I'm using the electric shears to cut my line just below the window channel and around the door handle assembly that I'm leaving intact. I like digging around in here because you never know what you're going to find. One time I found a ring underneath the seat of a, uh, it's either a Camaro or Nova I had. There's gum, I think. But it's cool because no one's ever been in here. And uh, a lot of times people are playing with the felts when they're driving there and they drop a ring or money down here. They don't, if they're not car people, they don't know how to get to it from the inside of the door panel. So look, look at this. <laughs> That's pretty cool. See, this is probably two 21-year-old kids on their way down to the Jersey Shore, popping a bunch of Schlitz. As I'm removing the old skin, I'm making sure to avoid any 90-degree corners. 
by radiusing all inside and outside edges. This will help later on with the welding to eliminate heat distortion. Finish removing the window and internal components before vacuuming the remaining dirt and debris. Don't forget to remove the inner flange of the old door skin utilizing your spot weld drill and panel separating tool. So I believe that was the first appearance of the Dremel tool. Um, I guess I should go add yeah. that to no. our... No, no need to add that. That's, I mean, everyone's got one, seriously. If okay. not, you know, ask your mom, borrow hers. But we don't need to buy one. Okay. <laughs> you make the rules. <laughs> All right, if you're just getting into this game, you might be a little intimidated when it comes to spot welds and removing them. They're easy to find. The spot welds form by resistance weld, which is gonna leave a small crater. You'll see this under paint prime or even some light corrosion. That's your spot weld. Another way to identify, you can take a flap disc and run in the edge or the seam of your door or your panel. There you'll see all your lows will still have your paint on it where your highs will be metal. That's where you know your spot weld is and you go ahead and start drilling on those. So of course we ran into a lot more rust than we expected. Big surprise on this car. Yeah, but it's not, it's not too bad that we need new doors. We got the tools, we already got the metal. Mm -hmm. So now I will need a couple bucks, so I'd like to get a throatless shear. A little Good more investment. controllable cutting out patches than with the uh, hand one. And you've seen us make a lot of templates out of cardboard, out of paper. So we're gonna kind of skip over that because I wanna show you how Mark hand formed this out of a block of wood. And it's just a great tip and you gotta see it. So let's get to that. Again, making your template out of a manila folder and transferring it to metal, carefully cut it out with the throatless shear. Okay, what we need to do here on this lower section is we want to rebuild this flange, both sides of the area here. What's posing a problem for us is that we have to come up into this radius and then we have this compound curve in here. So we'll start with a flat piece what we're going to need to do is stretch this center section, lift it up, and then fold these two legs 90 degrees. Easiest way for us to do that is going to do a uh, hammer form. Form a quick little wooden buck, and then uh, go ahead, hammer form in this raised radius area. So let's go do that. Transfer your manila folded template to your piece of wood and accurately cut out two identical pieces. See, anyone can do this, but you gotta put that into it. All right, in the hammer forming, 
we can see here we have our wooden form rigidly clamped into the vise. And it, it's pretty self-explanatory. What we're going to do is hammer the metal in this direction here, form it into, our, uh, into the shape that we want. So traditional body hammer, you can see just it's not going to get in there. So areas like this, you could use our nylon mallets. But what I like that really gets in there is the actual shape of the peen side. This is just a traditional ball peen hammer that we sell. What I've done is cut it off, just weld it right onto the back of one of the body hammers. What it does, it gives a little bit more reach, as you can see. So let's go ahead and start this. And what you want to do is work it slowly. Don't take one area and smash it down. We're going to work this whole area in here. I'm taking my time as I work this piece, checking my progress along the way, assuring I get the shape I need. Once I'm happy with my shape, I'll hit it quickly with the sanding disc to remove any burrs. Using the shrinker, I'll add some contour to the piece. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm sanding with 80, 120, and then uh, finishing up with 220. Get some of these hammer and forming marks out of there. This side I already completed. So what we'll do now, just gonna give a little marking area here. This will give me the line that I'll see with the scribe. After coating the piece in permanent marker, I'll scribe a line and trim the corner patch using shears and a file. Secured in place using pinch weld clamps, I can now form the piece a little more using a hammer before scribing the top side of the piece for trimming and final fitment. With my piece formed into the shape I need, I'm now scribing the old door to trim and make room for my patch piece. Using the MiG-175, I'll begin tacking the piece into place, utilizing the body hammer to assure the two panels remain flush. Having copper backers around is great for when it's time to weld some thin sheet metal. 
These will help avoid any burn through or holes. I'll continue to weld and blend the area before hitting with sandpaper and coating with 2K epoxy primer. That hammer forming, I'm amazed at how well that turned out. Yeah, it did, and it got us out of a jam because it was the most accurate and easiest way to get that compound curve in there. Plus, I'm gonna save the wooden box if we need to, flip it over and use it on the other door. So what's next? You found more, more patches. Rust? You <laughs> found more rust? So, back to the manila folder. All right, cool, fixing them. As I continue with patching the rust, I'm using the same technique over and over. Create my template tracing contours and edges, transferring this to metal, and slowly forming each piece of the puzzle. Don't get discouraged when you're tackling this type of repair. You don't have to make the entire patch out of one piece. Simply break it into manageable pieces, weld them together, blend, and you'll end up with exactly what you need. So uh, Mark over here tried to sneak a set of tea dollies in without telling me, but I caught it, and they're now on the budget. Yeah. But, but we're headed in the wrong direction now. Because of the cost? Yeah, we're supposed to be trying to catch up. Uh, these, things, these things are gold. They're going to they're gonna pay themselves back hundreds of times to this project. We'll be using them from here on out, any of the metal work. Cool. So it's worth it. Um, I thought we just bought a set of tea dollies that yeah. we're going to use <laughs> hundreds of times. They'll pay themselves off like yeah. gold. I don't know if we can run that clip back. Yeah. Uh, these things, these things are gold. They're going to, they're going to pay themselves back hundreds of times to this project. These things are gold. They're going to, they're going to pay themselves back hundreds of times to this project. Yeah, we will. We're going to use them, but this, I needed that for, uh, that particular bend in that metal. It was the best thing. It was laying in the shop. You had the purse strings all knotted up. I couldn't buy anything. Use what you got. All right, all right.
Let's not forget, the goal of this project is to repair and protect from further rust. This heavy gauge structure is thick and only has some minor surface corrosion. We'll clean with pre and hit with rust encapsulator and we're good to go. With my first patch panel complete, I'll tackle the rest in the same method before final fitment, welding it solid and blending. As you can see, more of the same. I won't waste your time here, you know the drill. Template, transfer to metal, carefully form, final fitment, and tack her in. So the rust is gone, the patches look great, Mark you did an awesome job again. We are losing to the body shop quote, but I'm pretty confident by the time we do the other door, we get the door skins on, we're going to be way ahead and we're going to prove that if you invest in yourself, you're going to have a room full of tools, you're going to have the knowledge to do the job, and you're going to save a lot of money. Yeah, it's 100%, because this was the first door, remember, so the second door, body shop would go through that same hassle that we did, uh, and increasing the cost of each phone call. So now we can go on and do the skins. We'll go draw them up if you want. All right, let's go draw it up on a napkin somewhere. <laughs> All right. 